more statistics yet for you guys. And finally, we have moved on to the normal distribution. It's looking good. It's one of my favorite things to do in statistics. So let's talk about the basics, especially when it comes to the end with this function phi, because students neglect it or they don't get taught it. And you do need to know it for your exam. So here it's saying the random variable x is normally distributed with mean 2.5 and standard deviation 0 0.4. Find the value of k such that these two situations are the case. Now guys, I can't reiterate this enough. When you do the normal distribution, just draw a sketch. I don't care how easy the question is in the exam, sketch everything, all right? So here they're saying x is normally distributed with mean 2.5 and standard deviation 0 0.4. Now here we use the variance. Now for part A, they want the probability or find the value of k such that x is greater than k is 0 0.02. Draw, uh, 0 0.02 even. Okay, can't even follow my own questions. 0 0.02. All right, let's do our sketch. Now the cool thing about the normal distribution is that the peak is at the mean. We know that, that most people are around the mean, yeah? So most probabilities will center on the mean. That's why it's an average. And the inflection point of a normal distribution is always the standard deviation away from the mean, which in this case is 0 0.4, okay? So always indicate both on your diagram. The probability that x is greater than k is some tiny 0.2%. So greater than some value of k is only 0.2%, where it must mean it's so far over here. Okay, and this is 0.002. Now, very important, guys. If we want to find values on the x-axis, we need to use the inverse normal. Inverse normal means we need the cumulative statement, unless you have the CG50 where you can look at right tails, but I advise even if you do have the CG50, you just stick to one tail, okay? So, what we need to do is we always need to write the cumulative statement, meaning the probability that x is less than k is one minus this. So remember, all probabilities are up to one, so if that's 0 0.002, then this will be 0 0.998, okay? Now we use our inverse normal, okay? So we go menu, we're gonna go seven. I'm gonna do number three for inverse normal. My area is what I've just written down, 0 0.998. Sigma is 0 0.4 and mu is 2.5. Whoops, I wrote 25, 2.5. So I didn't say what accuracy I want. Let's just say 2DP, 3.65. Nice, part B. The probability that x is between k and 3.1 is 0 0.67. So the probability that k is... So even though we've written equal to, it doesn't matter whether you write equal to or not equal to because the probability of equaling anything on a normal distribution is zero because you can't find the area of a line, all right? So it's just saying kx 3.1. New diagram. So we have 2.5. We have our 0 0.4. Uh, what is this probability? 0 0.67. Now we know because of symmetry, this is 50%, that's 50%. So 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So 3.1, I mean 2.5 plus 0 0.4, that'll be 2.9. So 3.1 might be somewhere over here. The area between that and some value of k is about 67%. So it must be somewhere over here, all right? So this area is 0 0.67. But just like I explained in part A, we need a cumulative statement. If I want to find k, I need a cumulative statement up to k. I need the probability of being less than or equal to k. Okay, I need this area. How do we do that? Very simple. We just work out the probability of up to 3.1. Yeah, we'll do this whole probability. We'll do the cumulative statement up to 3.1. Then we will subtract 0 0.67. Yeah, so working out this whole probability minus this probability. 
So if I was to write that down, I'm saying that the probability that x is less than k is the probability of being less than 3.1 minus 0 0.67. Okay, so going to menu, 7, Q, normal CD. So my lower. Now here, so generally speaking, calculators don't go beyond five standard deviations from the mean. But just to make it easier, you just do minus 9999999999 to be your lower limit, up to 3.1, and the calculator does save your sigma and mu, we get 0 0.933 minus 0 0.67. Now here guys, I'm gonna store this as A for later use. Yeah, I'm gonna store this as A. So my calculator, I'm gonna type in A minus 0 0.67. So my probability that X is less than K is, so I'm gonna go menu one, Alpha A minus 0 0.67. I think I stored it. I'm sure I did. Let me double check that. 0 0.263 dot dot dot. I'm going to store that as B because I'm just going to check what I stored as A. Alpha A, 0 0.93. Okay, cool. So that's B. Yep, store that as B. Now we just do the exact same as this. We're just going to do inverse normal. So we go menu 7, inverse normal, area alpha B which is now saved, and here it hasn't saved it because I did menu 1, went to my normal mode. So my sigma is 0 0.4 and 2.5. So k in this case is 2.25. And you can see based on my diagram, it makes sense. This is why the diagram is really important. You can see if you make sense or not. Now, here is which students neglect or they don't get taught this. For the standard normal variable, so the standard normal distribution, there's an infinite number of variations we can do. The standard is having a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. Okay, so it's basically saying the, the number line, zero, one, two, three, four, etc. That's our, normal our standard normal distribution, which has normal variable being z, okay? And we have this new function maybe to you guys, we call it phi. Phi is the cumulative distribution. Phi is defined as phi of some number k is the probability of z being less than k. So phi of k is the cumulative distribution that we've just been talking about. So like this, k. That area is phi of k. Okay? They're saying we have some constants a, b, and c. They are positive real numbers. Find expressions in terms of phi of a, phi of b, phi of c, meaning the areas for the probability of z being greater than a. Okay? Well, if we were to do a sketch of that situation, uh, I'm going to run out of space. Let me, ah, uh, oh, no, screw it. So, we have 0, 1. And we need to represent this in terms of phi. Well, we're talking about a, so let's just put a anywhere. Let's just put it here. We want this probability, okay? We want this. Well, what would phi of a be? Phi of a would be this. Phi of a is the cumulative statement up to a. So if that is phi of a, how do you work out this? We just do 1 minus phi of a, okay? So the probability that x is greater than a, or not a, uh, x, sorry, um, z is greater than a. The probability that z is greater than a is just 1 minus phi of a, okay? Right, uh, how do we do part d? Looks a bit more interesting for sure. Let's just get rid of part A and B, which have nothing to do with this. Here we're just studying just different elements of the normal distribution, which we need to be comfortable with before we do the harder problems. Because we soon, I think it's in the next couple of videos or so, I'm going to look at when mu or sigma or both are unknown, we're going to have to use the phi distribution. So finally, part D is looking at the probability that z is between minus b and c. Minus b, z, c. Draw your diagram. 
So we have 0, 1. Now remember, I stated that A, B and C are positive real numbers. So C would be over here somewhere. It could be any way you put. And minus B will be over here. All right. Now, we want the area in between. Okay, we want the area in between. Now, if I was to do talk about phi, so we want this, right? If I was thinking about cumulative distributions, to find this, I'll do the cumulative statement up to C minus the cumulative statement up to B, right? So I'll do phi of C minus phi of negative B, which is okay. However, they want phi of B. I'm being a bit mean with you guys. I'm saying, look, phi of minus B is not good enough. We need to figure out what is phi of minus B. Let's draw a new diagram to figure it out. Maybe you guys will be able to picture it yourselves. So I put minus B over here. Minus B is over here. I want this area, right? Because that's phi of minus B. I want this. We need to think of this area in terms of B. So we're going to think symmetrically on the other side, B. That area is the same as this one. And we actually did it in part A. The probability that Z is great, greater than A was 1 minus phi of A. So the probability of being greater than B is just 1 minus phi of B. Because to find this area, we need to do 1 minus the probability that X is less, or I keep writing X, but it's actually Z. Forgive me, please. Okay, so we want 1 minus less than equal to B, or less than B, doesn't matter, which is 1 minus phi of B. Okay, so this is 1 minus phi of B. So let's substitute it. So phi of C minus bracket 1 minus phi of B. When we expand, we get minus 1 plus phi of B. So it becomes phi of C, so we get phi of C plus phi of B, subtract 1. And that is our answer. So these are the fundamentals of the normal distribution, guys. So if you learned something today, I'd really appreciate if you hit the like button. Be prepared for the next few videos where we're going to cover all of the normal distribution stuff. And we're going to be using this notation interchangeably. So you want to come back to this video and make sure you're comfortable. So yeah, like the video if you learned something today. Subscribe for more maths content. If you're interested in my A-level maths courses, more details in the description. And feel free to join the Loon Gang Reddit page if you want to submit your own questions and get feedback and help from the community. I'll see you in the next video. Nice one, Mike.